Hello Bruins, this is Mrs. Peruk and today I'm going to talk about Darwin's ideas and I'm going to break this up into two. The first part is about Darwin's ideas and observations and the second one will be on evidence of evolution. Okay, so if you look at life, life has great diversity and then when we classify life we first have what's called domains and they're basically three domains of living things and that's bacteria and archaea, which is also bacteria, but because it's genetically so different that they, it has its own domain. And then you have eukaryotes, uh, which uh, animal, fungi, plants, protists fall under. And then we further break it down to kingdoms. And right now we have six kingdoms. And um, so even though you bacteria arca archaea have their own domains, but they also are classified under their own kingdom. So you have eubacteria, archaea, protista, plants, animals, and fungi. And then we further uh, uh, classify from kingdom to phylum, then class, order, family, genus, and then species. So here, for example, as for us, we are under animals, we're chordates, we're in a class of mammals, order of primates, family of hominids, genus Homo, species Homo sapiens. Now, uh, this naming uh, was first developed by Carolus Linnaeus, and he classified life's diversity uh, by appearances. So the, the science of naming things is called taxonomy, and he came up with a system of two-part names, which we call it binomial nomenclature. And he grouped these species based on the physical appearance and category. Um, other influences uh, that influenced Darwin was also George Cuvier, which was a, he was a geologist, and he said if you look at the rocks, the layers of rocks, uh, you have evidence of fossils that are, could be very similar to present life forms. And then he explains that there are certain events in the past that occur suddenly and by different mechanisms that occur, those occur today, and it's recorded in these rocks. Now there are other uh, scientists that also influence uh, Darwin is other geologists named James Hutton and Charles Lyell. Uh, James Hutton is known to formulate the idea of gradualism, that we see small changes that just slow and continuous on Earth, like earthquake and erosions and sedimentations, which still occur today. And Lyle kind of took that same idea and say, hey, you know, the planet has not changed and those same things that have been happening are still ha occurring. And that's why Earth must be very old. And then, of course, another major influence in Darwin's life is his own grandfather. And uh, mentions that life evolves as environments changes. Now, other works uh, that also heavily influenced Darwin was Lamarck and Thomas Malthus. Now, Lamarck uh, is one of the early people who had a theory of evolution, basically recognized that species evolved, that they change. Uh, however, uh, what we don't accept today is the idea that whatever uh, that animal acquires during his lifetime can be passed on. So for example, if you say dye your hair purple, you can pass that color hair to your child, which would he used use and disuse. So he here, for example, the giraffe, the giraffe keeps stretching and from stretching his neck gets longer. So that's where you get the use and disuse. And then inheritance of acquired characteristics that certain characteristics are acquired in the organ's lifetime and could be passed to the next generation. So we don't accept, of course, the idea of use and disuse and that the, that is inherited. We know what we inherit is our genetic material. But what he was very uh, keen on is that the environment affects the phenotypes and that the environment chooses what survives. Now, Thomas Malthus was in ec economics and at the time of Darwin, there was great industrial revolution, the gap between the rich and poor 
is increasing and kind of to justify these differences and poverty uh, Malthus said you know there's poverty because they have too many children that increases the human population that there's, there's limits to an environment and there's limit jobs there's limit foods and it's really irresponsible of these people to have so many children when they can't afford it and that leads to that struggle for existence and then Darwin further took that idea of struggle for existence and applied it to all living things so Charles Darwin uh, his voyage on the uh, Beagle really affected uh, how he developed his theory based on his observations and it was a five-year voyage and from his observation he noticed that basically the life evolves or changes due to the environment and this environment is basically choosing what characteristics allows that individual to survive and reproduce and pass those traits and that mechanism is what he called natural selection and his contemporary Alfred Russell Wallace um, also came up with the same idea based on his work in um, the area of Brunei in Malaysia and he sends his paper to Darwin and Darwin has been hesitant to publish his work until he gets Wallace's paper and says wait a minute you know these ideas are very similar and it's about time maybe I should publish my ideas. So what was Darwin's observations about organisms that he saw on his trip? First of all, he saw that organisms tend to over reproduce. And perhaps this is because to make sure that offspring, some offspring would survive and survive to reproduce. But he also noticed that even though they tend to over reproduce, uh, the populations kind of remain stable. So there will be fluctuations but in general, they stabilize. He also observed that the environment resources are limited. And that because of these limited resources, there's competition among organisms. Now, when you look at any population, and noting that population means a defined group of individuals that live in around the same place, location, that can interbreed to produce viable, which means living, and fertile offspring. So those offspring can also be produced. And if you look at it, there's variation. Okay, so variation is like the raw material that populations can use to change. If you don't have variation and everyone looks the same, you know, you can't change. And much of that variation is passed on from parent to offspring and variation is heritable. So individuals with favorable phenotypes are more likely to survive and survive to reproduce and pass those traits to for, uh, subsequent generations. And individuals with favorable phenotypes again survive and those with unfavorable uh, do not survive and therefore do not uh, pass those traits to their offspring. So it's about the environment, and the environment when we talk about could be predators or the ability to get food, and again, the ability to survive in a particular location at a particular time. So here, for example, we, he uses his finches as a good example. Individuals with favorable phenotypes are more likely to survive. So the finches uh, have different sized beaks, and depending on the food availability, uh, you would see finches in different numbers depending on the food. So if there's food that bigger beak allows them to uh, feed better, you saw greater numbers. Uh, if you saw smaller beaks in a particular area, uh, then they would survive more. So basically, he, f he made inferences from his observations. Over-reproduction leads to a struggle for limited resources, but only a fraction of population surviving each generation. Therefore, you don't see that exponential growth. Survival is random. Variants in a population which are best adapted will survive. And differential survival and reproduction leads to a gradual change in a population. So that particular trait accumulates and you see a change in a population. So remember, when we're talking about evolution, we're not talking about a change in an individual, but a change in a population over time. 
So here, for example, you have these graphs. And here you have original uh, population. You have variation, say of mice of a different fur color. And a particular environment might favor very dark mice, and that's called directional. Or a particular environment might favor a very light and very dark mice, but not the average. This is what we call diversifying selection. Or the average uh, trait is selected for, we call that stabilizing. So take pause here and see if you can uh, summarize his observations and inferences. So basically this is what you should have. First observations, organisms tend to overreproduce. Population numbers tend to be stable and resources are limited, therefore competition exists among individuals. And this leads to the basic inference that there's a struggle for existence. His other two uh, observations of variation exist among individuals, and variation is inheritable, that you pass it on from parent to offspring. And that this results in differential survival and reproduction with, with beneficial traits that are adapted to the environment. And differential reproduction results with certain traits accumulating in a population, and therefore that population evolves. So here, for example, uh, you have a, let's say, on a dark rock, you have a barnacles, and the predator for these barnacles are a bird. And this bird can see with the light ones, and because you can see the light ones, you'll eat those, and so you see over time, the population of dark barnacles accumulates, and it changes. So, beaks um, is one of, uh, great observations that Darwin did on the Galapagos Island and what he noticed that there are finches in the mainland and then when he went to these several islands there were different finches with different characteristics. So these finches had great variation. And again remember individuals don't evolve but populations evolve. So what pressure that chooses what it survives is the environment and the environment could be availability of food okay so in one environment the finch with the larger beak is able to find food more meaning be able to survive more and pass those traits and over time the population will be more uh, finches with larger beaks or so therefore that natural selection is what we mean is the environment chooses the traits that allows the individual to survive. So a natural selection either increase or decrease a particular trait. So for example, another environment might favor a finch with a smaller beak. And a smaller beak over time accumulates. And a larger beak and a medium beak finches die off. So evolution is not goal-directed, doesn't lead to perfection. Again, the raw material is variation. And those traits are vary as environments changes. So here, for example, you have two traits that are chosen over, and over time that changes. So evolution is not goal-directed, does not lead to perfection, and populations changes over time. And that was one of his main points, and that all living things have this common ancestor, and that we're all part of this tree of life. So if you come back to the finches, and all the finches uh, have a common ancestor from the mainland, and as the different finches went on different islands, those different islands were represented different environments, and therefore uh, looked different. So finally, in 1859, Darwin publishes his book, The Origin of Species. And thank you for listening, and my next screencast will be on evidence of evolution.